For the second tour in a row, we've left our comfort zone of the Midwest behind. This time, we're in the heart of Arizona at the Phoenix Zoo. Set on 125 acres within Papago Park, the Phoenix Zoo is divided into four different trails featuring mostly species from the world's tropical regions. The African Trail has zoo favorites like giraffes, baboons, and cheetahs. The Tropics Trail is home to rainforest dwellers from both Asia and South America. And the focus of today's tour, the Arizona Trail. I'm choosing to start with the Arizona Trail for a couple of reasons. For one, it's the first area you would come to upon entering the zoo. And what better way to introduce the Phoenix Zoo than by meeting the amazing wildlife that call the Arizona Desert home. The wildlife of the American West is symbolized by iconic species like the pronghorn, javelina, and mountain lion. And we'll get to those later. But the Sonoran Desert is also famous for its reptiles, with Arizona alone being home to over 100 species of these scaly, cold-blooded creatures. Through the double doors and straight ahead is a simple, round habitat with desert tortoises and several kinds of lizards. Tucked in the corner to the right is another simple open air exhibit for desert box turtles and Sonoran mud turtles. Now properly moving into the hall of Arizona reptiles. While there are some other reptiles like the Yarrow spiny lizard, most of the tanks lining the wall are inhabited by snakes, including an impressive 15 species of rattlesnakes which is appropriate since Arizona is home to more kinds of rattlesnakes than any other state. It's no secret where rattlesnakes get their name, but did you know the rattle is made of keratin, the same material as our hair and fingernails? Despite their somewhat infamous reputation, rattlesnakes prefer to avoid humans, and when bites do occur, less than 1% are actually fatal. Venturing back outside, I can now reveal that those double doors brought us into a walkthrough aviary. Among the free roaming birds is the snowy egret, a species that was once heavily hunted for their plumes, but proper protection allowed the population to rebound, and they are now common and found widespread across the Americas. The white-faced ibis, another wading bird with shiny plumage ranging in color from maroon and purple to metallic green. The turkey vulture is the cleanup crew of the animal world, with an excellent sense of smell that allows them to locate carrion more than a mile away. The gambel's quail is one of five species of quail found in the Grand Canyon state and I actually had the chance to see some in the wild during my time in Arizona. More birds can be seen in a separate enclosed habitat located to the left of the entrance, including wild turkeys, believed to be named after the country of Turkey since they reminded Europeans of the guinea fowl that they associated with the Middle Eastern nation. Another offshoot from the main trail, the small Deserts of the World corner opens up its theming to desert species from all around the globe. With 13 tanks holding mostly reptiles like Gila monsters, the Gigi skink, the Baja blue rock lizard with its striking coloration is found only within a small range on the Baja Peninsula of California and is apparently a known cannibal, so that's a fun fact. Anyway, moving on, a larger tank holds the venomous Rio Fuerte beaded lizard, a larger cousin of the Gila monster. Flipping sides of the room, the venom in the saliva of the pig-snouted western hognose snake is too weak to affect humans, but lethal to the small animals they prey on. Sidewinder rattlesnakes are named for their specialized S-shaped movements that help them stay cool in the desert. And like all rattlesnakes, they are viviparous, meaning they give birth to live young, which is unusual compared to the majority of reptiles. 
a third offshoot from the aviary, Diversity in the Desert features yet more reptiles as well as amphibians and invertebrates, but this isn't zoo tours, so we won't be talking about all of them. However, I would like to shine the spotlight on the Arizona walking stick. Stick insects are fascinating creatures built for the perfect camouflage. They can also be resilient, with the ability to regrow a missing leg the next time they molt. Walking sticks are a female-dominated world, since females can reproduce without fertilization from a male, but only female offspring. In fact, there's some species of stick insects in which scientists have never found a male individual. Back outside, there's more views of the birds and an open-air exhibit for black-tailed prairie dogs. Prairie dogs live in complex towns made up of multiple family groups, with the largest town ever recorded covering 25,000 square miles. The underground tunnel systems beneath the town are very intricate, with chambers dedicated to different behaviors like sleeping or raising young. Their burrows are important to the prairie ecosystem, providing homes for other species, including one that we'll see in just a moment. If you're curious about the traps, apparently they are placed in the exhibit to allow the prairie dogs to become used to them prior to being rounded up for medical exams. The last exhibit encompassed by the large walkthrough aviary is a simple standalone habitat tucked in the corner for the cactus ferruginous pygmy owl, whose fall size in the form of dark patches of feathers on the backside of their head allow them to confuse prey while hunting. Through a set of doors is another, much smaller walkthrough aviary. Running loose is the speedy Greater Roadrunner, a well-known member of the Cuckoo family that can run at up to 20 miles per hour. The aviary's other residents were perhaps my favorite species in the entire complex, the Burrowing Owl. Burrowing owls are unusually diurnal compared to most owl species, and as their name implies, they live underground in burrows. However, they don't build these homes themselves, but instead move into burrows dug by other species, including prairie dogs. Burrowing owls may be tiny and adorable, but that doesn't stop them from being successful hunters, predating on a variety of small creatures, including small rodents, reptiles, amphibians, and insects. These little fellows were very vocal on my visit, showing off their signature call. I could go on about them, but we'll actually be seeing this species on another tour fairly soon, so I'll save some more burrowing owl facts for that episode. Now beginning the trail proper, a short stroll up the winding path brings us to the first habitats. On the right, the nocturnal ringtail was unsurprisingly enjoying a day-long snooze. While on the left, we finally have a chance to see a bird that we missed way back in episode 4. Alas, I didn't film much of this magnificent golden eagle, so we'll say a quick hello and be on our way. Up the trail, we reach an overlooking view of the first large desert yard, home to the coyote. But somewhat ironically, what may be the most common animal on our tour was a no-show on my visit. Nearby, a similar landscape features javelinas, aka the collared peccary. A few tours back, I highlighted the endangered Chacoan peccary, However, things are going a little better for their collared cousins. 45,000 javelinas roam Arizona alone, and the species distribution stretches all the way from the American Southwest down to Argentina. In fact, the animals are considered somewhat of a pest in the Phoenix area. Nonetheless, the javelina is a unique animal. Peccaries are not pigs, but belong to their own family, with features like small ears, straight tusks, and three-toed feet distinguishing them from wild pigs. They are also known to have awful eyesight, but make up for it with a keen sense of smell to alert them of danger. Living within the rocks is a bobcat. And a little tip, if you want to see bobcats and other felines awake, 
try to visit their exhibits as soon as possible after the zoo opens, which is how I got so much footage for my Memphis Zoo Cat Country tour and when I had the opportunity to see Roberto Gatto, which may be the greatest zoo animal name of all time, enjoying his breakfast. The bobcat is the smallest species of lynx and the most abundant wild cat in North America. In Native American mythology, the bobcat is paired with the coyote in opposite sides of a duality. The bobcat is associated with fog, while the coyote represents wind. The bobcat also symbolizes tenacity, patience, and the ability to see through masks. At the tip of the trail is a vast open yard for the pronghorn, the fastest land mammal in North America, and second only to the cheetah among all land mammals, which makes sense since the pronghorn evolved to outrun the now extinct American cheetah. Back down and around to the right, Opposite the bobcat, roaming the rocky ledges are mountain lions, a powerful big cat capable of leaping over 40 feet through the air. As widespread and adaptable as the bobcat is, the mountain lion may have them be in both categories, since their range includes not only North America, but extends down to the southern tip of South America. And they can be found in almost every habitat within that range, from rainforest to the deserts right here in Arizona. The mountain lion is also important in Native American culture, symbolizing, amongst other things, grace, strength, and power. Phoenix's mountain lions are 14-year-old sisters Sierra and Mystic, who were rescued in South Dakota in 2007 after their mother was killed. These siblings will soon be receiving a massive upgrade with the upcoming Big Cats of Arizona. The new mountain lion exhibit will be five times the size of their current space. The complex will also feature a new home for jaguars and feature overhead tunnels, which are a trendy addition to big cat exhibits these days. Construction will break on the new habitats later this summer. Beyond the felines is a side path that leads past a row of mesh habitats. The first of the three holds a North American porcupine, alongside the smallest falcon in North America, the American Kestrel. The other two hold more birds, including doves, a great horned owl, and the thick-billed parrot, the only parrot native to North America. The trail dead ends at a sloping hillside for Mexican gray wolf sisters Jade, Scarlet, and Luna, who were born here at the Phoenix Zoo in 2019. Backtracking past the birds and cats and taking the right fork, located around the middle of the complex is a large flight cage for a very special species, the California condor, an animal I'd really like to talk about, but alas, they weren't very active and I found it difficult to get good footage, so perhaps another time. Further along the trail is an iconic American symbol, the bald eagle, with a name derived from the old English word piebald, which means white or white-headed. The bald eagle is one of the great conservation success stories. Their numbers dipped dangerously low in the mid-1900s, but thanks to protection from the Endangered Species Act and the banning of the pesticide DDT, they were able to recover and there is now over 3,000 bald eagles in the lower 48 states. The final habitat along the Arizona Trail is for a white-nosed coati, who I thought was going to be another no-show, before I saw this adorable face poking out of her box. This is Olive, who arrived at the Phoenix Zoo in 2021. The trail continues until you are brought full circle back to where we began, concluding our celebration of Arizona wildlife. While it may not be the most flashy or spectacular complex out there, the Arizona Trail successfully showcases the diversity, both large and small, of Arizona's Sonoran Desert. To cap it off, comment below to answer today's trivia question, what is the state mammal of Arizona?